Hello everyone. I'm speaking in a slightly different voice today on this episode. I'm quite close to the microphone and I'm speaking a little more softly and calmly than usual. And that's because this episode of Luke's English Podcast is designed to help you fall asleep while listening. So don't listen to it while driving or operating heavy machinery. If you listen to this carefully and follow all the instructions I say, then you should be asleep by the end of the episode. Some people tell me that they listen to Luke's English podcast while falling asleep. Apparently, I'm so boring that it's the perfect way to help them doze off at night. I'm just kidding, of course. I don't get that many messages saying that I'm boring, but I know that some people fall asleep while listening to my podcast. I too like to listen to podcasts at night while lying in bed, and it's a lovely experience to drift off while listening to someone else's words. Something my wife and I have been doing recently is to find ways to help ourselves go to sleep. Sometimes we feel a bit stressed because of work or whatever, and one thing we've been doing is to take turns to guide ourselves through a relaxation meditation with the aim of putting each other into a relaxed state that ensures that we get a really good night of sleep. The guided meditation usually involves giving some instructions for relaxation, which you both follow step by step. Simply following the instructions allows you to switch off your mind and allow your body to relax fully, and then you drift off into a truly restful and healing slumber. I find this really helps me, not just to drift off to sleep at night, but also because it relaxes me generally in my life. And the next day I find I have better concentration and sharpness. In fact, this kind of relaxation exercise is said to have a cumulative effect. The more you do it, the more relaxed and stress-free you become long-term. Also, there is a theory that you can learn things subconsciously in your sleep. Listening to things while you drift off and while you are in a sleep state has been said to be a good way to internalize information. Is this true? Apparently, research on the subject of sleep learning or hypnopedia have been inconclusive, but studies have shown that the brain does react to stimulation while we are sleeping. So, what I'm going to do in this episode is to guide you through a relaxation meditation with the aim of helping you to fall into a comfortable deep sleep. Then, once you're in that state of sleep, I'm going to read some grammar rules to you. The aim of that is to either A, help you learn the grammatical rules, and B, ensure that you definitely don't wake up and that you continue to sleep really, really well. So this episode is completely devoted to helping you fall asleep. I'm going to try really hard to help you drift off into a state of nourishing and refreshing rest. So I advise you to listen to this episode while you are lying in bed or lying on a sofa prepared to get a really good night's sleep, somewhere that you can comfortably see, sleep for a long time. So not on the bus or train uh, on the way to work, and certainly not while driving. If you have insomnia, this could really help you. Or if you just want to get the full benefit of a good night's sleep, then this episode is also for you. I suggest that this is one of those episodes that you can listen to over and over again, whenever you feel like you want to get uh, a good night's sleep or if you just want to relax. However, if you're driving, operating heavy machinery or simply in charge of a nuclear power station or something, I would warn you not to listen to this because seriously, I'm going to make you fall asleep. I'm quite serious. I've done lots of reading about suggestion and hypnosis techniques and I'm really going to work quite specifically on making you fall asleep in this episode. So if you are driving a car uh, or doing something that requires you to be fully awake and aware of your surroundings, then please do not listen to this episode. I must be clear about that. Do not listen to this episode while driving. Just wait until you're at home or in a hotel room or at work, someplace where you don't really need to be fully conscious. Then put the headphones on, lie back, and drift away. Okay, so I'll guide you through various stages of relaxation and then into a sleep state. So we'll go down, down, 
down through various levels of meditation until you are hopefully completely asleep, or at least so relaxed that you can't be bothered to open your eyes and do something else. And then when you're down in the deeper relaxation zone, I'll read some grammar rules to you. And from that point, I will also add some hypnotic suggestions to ensure that when you do wake up, you will be in a fully positive and energised state, ready to take on whatever life throws at you that day. And at the end of the episode, uh, the sound will slowly drift away into silence, letting you continue your sleep until the next morning, when you will then wake up refreshed and positive. So the main thing is this, as long as you follow my guidance step by step, then you will be asleep by the end of this episode. Okay, so the first thing is to prepare the environment around you. So please make sure that you're in relaxed surroundings. Ideally, you'll be in a a tidy place, not too disorganised and messy. Oh, that's a pity, because you seem to be in your home. And, well, it's not very tidy, is it? So perhaps you should just stop listening to this for a moment and just clean up a bit, okay, and then carry on. Okay, good, you're back. Oh, good, and the room is much neater now. Well done. Oh, I see that some of you didn't bother to do any tidying up. Okay, that's your choice. It doesn't really matter that much anyway. It's still possible to get the full benefit of this relaxation exercise without being in a tidy place. But really, though, you should think about being a bit more hygienic. I mean, that's, well, that's just not very civilised, especially all that stuff in the corner and all that dust. And, And what is that next to the bin? And would it kill you to do a bit of laundry sometimes? Seriously. Anyway, make sure that the ambient temperature in the room is right. Not too warm, not too cold. If you live in a very cold place, then you might consider moving to a different country. Somewhere with a better climate, not England. No, go to the Mediterranean or something. Okay? And if that's not practical right now, then don't worry. Just put on an extra jumper or get a blanket or something, okay? Make sure that you're either sitting in a relaxed position or ideally you should be lying down comfortably. The best thing is to be in bed or at least on a bed. Next to the bed or just near a bed isn't really good enough, okay? To get maximum benefit, you need to be actually on or ideally in a bed. Your bed, preferably. Don't just get into someone else's bed, especially without their permission, because people tend not to like that sort of thing, okay, unless they fancy you, and then they might be glad. But I'd say, to be on the safe side, it's better if you stick to your own bed this time, in order to avoid confusion, or at worst, violence and strong language, you know, like, what the hell are you doing in my bed? Or... Who are you? And wh- wh- why are you in my house? Get out! Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just listening to Luke's English podcast. Luke told me to do it. It's, it's the sleep episode, I'm sorry. That kind of conversation is not very conducive to a relaxing night of sleep. So stay in your own bed. That's probably the best thing to do. Don't forget to take off your shoes. That's right. You might want to draw the curtains as well. No, 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 put the pencil down. I don't mean that. No, draw the curtains means close the curtains, yes. Yeah, it also means draw with a pencil. Draw, it's a homonym. Okay, oh, you already knew that? Okay, well, well done, yes. That's very clever. Now, don't get cocky, okay? All right. I'd also suggest that you take your mobile phone and put it on silent. And if possible, just turn it off. Or even better, just throw it out of the window. You shouldn't be distracted by it, okay? Statistics have shown that we think about touching or looking at our phone every 2.35 seconds. Don't ask me where I got that information because, frankly, I just made it up now on the spot. But it doesn't matter, okay? Don't be distracted by your phone. Also, don't be distracted by this episode of the podcast. In fact, if you're listening to this, it's probably better to just stop listening, take the headphones out of your ears, and do something else. Because me talking to you is probably just going to distract you from the relaxation exercise that we're going to be doing. Okay, and that might keep you awake, to be honest. I'm joking, of course. Don't stop listening. That would defeat the purpose of this. But do try to reduce the number of distractions that you have around you. 
Put your phone on silent and put it on the side, out of the way. Obviously, if you're using your phone to listen to this, then it's better if you keep it near you because it's difficult. I mean, you know, you need to keep it within the range of the headphone, uh, the headphone cable. Um, but um, maybe you should turn down the lights. Just turn the lights down. Maybe light a few candles. So now you've prepared the room and you're ready to fall asleep. So get into a comfortable position. Personally, I quite like lying on my back with my arms and legs spread out like a starfish. Or sometimes I lie in a straight line with my arms by my sides like a penguin. Or perhaps curled up like a snake on my side. Or just generally spread out along the bed like some sort of slug. Whatever animal you'd like to copy, that's just great. Because animals sleep too. And that is the whole point of this exercise after all, isn't it? Yes, it is. So now you're comfortable, I'll start leading you through the initial relaxation stage. I hope you're not too sleepy yet, because we haven't really started properly, okay? And if you are drifting off now, then perhaps you should just get up, have a bit of a walk around the building, or just drink a black coffee or something, because we haven't started yet. So just wake up a bit, because you don't want to miss the important bits. No, okay. So let's begin the initial relaxation stage. The first thing to do is to fully tighten all the muscles in your body. Clench all the muscles together. That's it. Pull them tight so that you're stiff like a board. Okay, hold it. That's it. Keep holding it. Oh, wait. Oh, ow. Wait a minute. I think I've got some cramp. Oh, cramp in my foot. Hold on. Ah. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I just got a bit of cramp in my foot. Um, anyway, so hold your muscles tight, that's it, and then ch gradually relax them all. Not yet, I haven't said the magic word, which is release, okay? So keep holding those muscles tight, don't relax yet, because I haven't said release. Okay, that wasn't it, by the way, I know I've just said it a couple of times, but that wasn't it, okay? So keep holding, and then gradually release. Good. Now let's do that again, okay? Tighten all of your muscles like you're made of wood or something. Hold them all tight and then gradually release. Don't forget to breathe. That's very important. You need to breathe in order to supply oxygen to all your vital organs, especially the brain. And you need oxygen in order to be alive. Okay, now this isn't going to work if you're not alive, all right? So breathe. In fact, let's concentrate on your breathing. Okay, so I'd like you to take a deep breath through your nose. Breathe deep into your lungs and then slowly release it through your mouth. Like you're smoking a big spliff with Bob Marley. When you breathe deeply, focus on breathing from your diaphragm. Okay, that's a muscle that sits below your lungs dividing the thorax from the abdomen, okay? Just underneath your lungs. Um, focus on breathing from there or from your stomach because that is the key to drawing in the maximum amount of breath into your body. Don't just let the rib cage rise and fall. No, I'd like you to focus on letting your stomach swell first and then the ribs, okay? So you take a deep breath in. Allow your stomach to swell up and then your rib cage to rise, okay? You'll find that you're pulling more oxygen deep into your lungs that way and it will relax you more. Do this a few times. Take a deep breath in from the diaphragm and through your nose. So, let your stomach swell and then your rib cage can rise and then exhale through the mouth. Slowly. Deep breath in. Exhale through the mouth. Take a deep breath in. And exhale through the mouth. Take a deep breath in. And exhale through the mouth. 
Now you can continue your normal breathing, but for a moment now, I'd like you to just be aware of the air passing slowly through your mouth, uh, passing slowly through your nose and then out through your mouth. Just be aware of the air moving in and out. Don't force it to go at a particular pace. Just let it happen. Being aware of the sensation of the cool air moving in and then out of your face. In and then out of your face. In and then out of your face. Okay? Just let any thoughts that appear in your mind go by without attempting to control them or focus on them. Okay? Just let your mind be like an open window and let the th- and remember that the thoughts are like a cool breeze flowing through that open window in a relaxed way. Just observe the feeling of the air passing through your mouth and the thoughts just drifting through your mind without any need to stop them. Let them continue on their way just like a breeze through an open window. The window is like your mind, open, peaceful. There's a blue sky and the sun is lazily setting in the distance as the curtains sway in the breeze. They're slightly old curtains. You'll probably need to change them before long, but never mind about that now. Just let yourself breathe slowly and allow your mind to wander without feeling the need to control it. Just let you let yourself go. Just let yourself go completely. Now, Let's take you further into a state of relaxation. In this part, I'm going to ask you to focus on relaxing every part of your body one by one, step by step, from the toe all the way up to the tip of your head. Every single part of your body is going to relax. Okay? Um, So let's start all the way down at the bottom with your toes. So I'd like you to imagine that all of these, as I name these body parts, I'd like you to imagine them all suddenly relaxing, all the tension is just drifting away, and each body part is slowly relaxing one by one, step by step. And as each body part relaxes slowly, as you hear the words that I'm saying into your ears, you will hear e- you will feel each body part relaxing slowly, step by step, one by one, more and more relaxed, deeper and deeper. Okay, so let's start all the way at the bottom with your toes. So I'd like you to imagine your toenails are relaxing, your toes, the arch of your foot, your heel, the Achilles heel, which is that sort of bit at the back where there's a a kind of a tendon thing. The Achilles heel is relaxing, your ankle, your uncle as well, your shins are relaxing, your calf muscle, your kneecap, is very relaxed. Your knee in general, in fact, including the space at the back of your leg behind the knee that nobody has a name for. That space is relaxing too. Your thighs are relaxing. Your quadricep muscles on your thighs are slowly relaxing. Your groin, your private parts, your bum, both cheeks, the private area of your bum between the cheeks. That's relaxing too. That's very important. Your waist, your hips, your navel is relaxing, and your tummy button, which is basically the same thing as your navel. Your stomach is relaxing. Your abdominal muscles are relaxing too. Your solar plexus is relaxed. That's the bit in the middle. If someone punches you there, then you tend to fall on the floor. Never mind that now. Let let your solar plexus relax. And as as we move slowly up the body now, The bottom half is completely relaxed and in a state of total calm sleep at the moment. Your sides are relaxed. The small of your back, your spine from the bottom all the way up to the top, every single vertebrae is now relaxed. All of your ribs, every single one of them. Your chest, your chest hair is nice and relaxed as well. Your nipples are relaxed too. Your armpits, your shoulder blades, your shoulders in general, your bicep and tricep muscles are relaxed, your forearms, your wrists are limp and calm, the backs of your hands, the palms of your hands, your knuckles, 
your fingers, your thumbs, your fingernails, the bits of skin next to your fingernails that you might bite if you get nervous, the cuticles, those are those bits at the base of your fingernails that women like to scrape off when they get a manicure, even your cuticles are relaxed. Your fingertips, your fingerprints are relaxed as well, if that's possible. The back of your neck, your throat, your jaw is relaxed. Let your whole jaw relax. Don't hold it, let it go. Your cheeks are relaxed. All of your teeth are fully relaxed. That's not really possible, but just go with it anyway. And that includes the molars at the back, the canines, and the incisors. Your gums are relaxed too. Your tongue, yeah. your tongue is relaxed, yeah, like that. Your alveolar ridge, your philtrum. What's the philtrum? It's that space between your top lip and your nose. That's the little sort of channel thing. That's your philtrum. That's fully relaxed. Your nostrils, the bridge of your nose, the tip of your nose, even your nasal hair is fully relaxed. Your cheekbones, your ears, including your earlobes and even your eardrums on the inside, including the bit behind your ears that your parents always remind you to wash. For some reason, that's very important to keep that space clean. Don't forget to wash behind your ears, is what they always say. Even that space is relaxed too. In fact, your parents are relaxed as well, okay? Everyone in your family is fully relaxed. Your temples on the sides of your head, your eye bags underneath your eyes, your eyeballs, your eyebrows, your eyelids, and your eyelashes are fully relaxed. Even your retinas, your pupils, and your optic nerves are fully relaxed. Your brain is calm, your forehead, your monobrow, if you've got one of those, if you're like one of the Gallagher brothers from Oasis, maybe you've just got one uh, eyebrow that goes all the way across the front of your head, that's a, called a monobrow. Even that is now fully relaxed. Your hairline, your scalp, all your follicles and your hair, your crown at the top of your head, and last but not least, your brain mind. It's all totally relaxed. And now we are going to move on to the next stage of this relaxation exercise. And as you lie there, you've drifted off to the ambient dream state. And at this point, I'd like, to, I'd like you to imagine that you are slowly walking down a long corridor towards some steps. There's a long, dark corridor. The wallpaper is a kind of light blue color. There's some dim lighting, and you see the corridor stretching down to the end. And you think to yourself, at the end of this corridor is my bedroom. And it's been a very, very long day. And as you walk down the corridor with every single step, you get closer and closer to your bed. And you get more and more sleepy and more and more relaxed as your feet touch the ground, the wooden floorboards under your feet creak with the weight and the certainty that within a few moments you'll be lying down inside fresh sheets, putting your head on the pillow and falling asleep. It's been such a long day and you slowly move down the corridor until you find a staircase. There are a few stairs and a door at the end of the staircase and it's rather dark it's quite late at night you've had a good supper you've had some soup and now you're ready to sleep the sleep of dreams and you slowly walk down the staircase and i'd like you to imagine that with every step that you take you become more and more sleepy as you go further down and down the staircase, you get closer and closer to that perfect sleep state. You take your first step onto the first rung, you step down and down, deeper and deeper into sleep with every step that you take. Just a couple more steps and you'll be in total relaxation. Down and down, deeper and deeper into a sleep state. You hold your hand on the rail next to the stairs because you're so sleepy, you could fall asleep at any moment. Hold yourself stable on the, on the rail and move your feet slowly and carefully down each step, deeper and deeper, 
down and down into a perfect sleep state. You only have one more step to go. Don't stop. Don't be tempted to sit down and close your eyes. You've just got one more step. That's it. You place your foot on the floor and deeper and deeper and down and down into sleep. And now you face the door and there it is. It's a dark blue door. This space seems so calm and so comfortable. You could even sleep on the floor here next to the door, but you hold onto the handle. It seems warm to your touch. And you know that on the other side of this door, there is total sleep. This is the realm of total sleep. And you slowly turn the handle in your hand and open the door and a cool air, a cool refreshing air comes to greet you, okay? And as you walk through the doorway, the door, you realize, has the word sleep written on it in blue letters. It says the word sleep on it. And you open the door and inside you find the world of sleep. And you finally made it. Here you are in the refreshing world of sleep. This is the realm of slumber. And it's all fluffy and it's made of cotton wool. The ground is like a cloud in fact. And as you walk along it, it's all soft, soft under your feet. You're walking on clouds and they're all made of fluffy cotton wool. This is where your brain goes when you're sleeping. In fact, your body is already asleep and your mind is now wandering through the realm of sleep and dreams. It's all made of cotton wool clouds under your feet. Everything is blue and white and it smells of fresh blankets. Up in the sky, you see the clouds and the stars twinkling in the distance. It's a perfectly calm night. Under your feet, there are lovely soft blankets, pillows and duvets. You could lie anywhere and sleep like a baby, but you keep moving, looking for the perfect spot. You see some sheep made of cotton wool. One of them says, you say in return and the sheep lazily approach a gate in a cotton wool field and as they approach the gate they slowly begin to jump over it one by one but instead of landing on the other side these fluffy cotton wool sheep as they leap into the air they just continue drifting up into the sky never landing on the ground and they drift up and up further and further into the starry sky, eventually becoming little fluffy clouds that slowly drift across the night sky into the distance. You hear one of them go in the distance, and with every sheep that jumps and floats up into the air, every single sheep that disappears into the distance, you go further and further and deeper and deeper into that sleep state. And as you feel the soft pillows and sheets under your feet. As you listen to my words, you go more and more and deeper and deeper into that relaxing sleep state. Every step takes you deeper and deeper into a restful slumber. Eventually, as you walk across the cotton wool field, you come across a river. There it is, it's dark, black water. Just going near the river makes you feel drowsy. But the river seems so inviting and so refreshing and so calming. But the water seems to have a magical effect, making you fall asleep. But nevertheless, you lean over towards the water in order to take a drink. It seems so refreshing. And you dip your hand in and take a couple of drops into your mouth. And as you do so, you slowly drift off as you slowly dip yourself into the water and the water envelops you. The dark, cool water pulls you down into the deep waters of deep, deep sleep. And as you slowly enter the water, each part of you from your head to your toe enters a deep, restful slumber. Under you go with a lazy fish drifting by and an old boot on the bottom and a tin can. It's nice down here. 
under the water. And there's a blanket which you wrap around yourself to keep you nice and warm. You can breathe down here under the water. In fact, it's a lot easier to breathe here than it was before. Even though you're safe under the water, the air is fresh and healthy, but the water makes you drowsy. So drowsy now. And there's a sandbank over there that looks comfortable with a bunch of clean pillows and blankets piled up next to it. And you slowly move towards the sandbank, ready to lay your head down and fall asleep. Next to the sandbank, on the bottom of the riverbed, you notice a door. And you feel inextricably drawn towards this door. And as you pass through it, it's wonderfully warm and protective on the inside. And as you walk through, you realise you're in an old school classroom. It's an old wooden classroom with windows at the top of the walls and wooden panelling and old wood wooden desks. The room is surrounded by old metal radiators that make the room really, really warm and comfy. All the kids have hung up their jackets and coats on the wall at the back of the room and they now are sitting at their desks wearing comfy woolen jumpers, shirts and ties. And there's an old man at the front of the school classroom sitting behind a desk. The old man seems kind and he invites you to sit down at a spare desk. It's early in the morning. It's so early and it's not even light outside yet. And you sit at the old desk and you're so sleepy sitting there that you can hardly stay awake. It's like when you were a kid and you couldn't stop falling asleep in those early morning classes in winter at school when the room was so warm and you were still sleepy from your night. You sit at the desk next to one of the old radiators which keeps your body lovely and cosy. It's safe here in this room. You're here to learn English from this old man in a tweed suit with a white beard. He looks a bit like God or Father Christmas, or that guy at the end of The Matrix Reloaded, or maybe Colonel Sanders from KFC. He looks like a wise old man, and he tells you in his calm, authoritative voice, he tells you and the other children to take some notes as he reads you some grammar rules. You hold a big pencil in your hand and try to write notes in an old notebook but your head is nodding and you just want to lie down on the floor there next to the radiator where it's lovely and warm, but you can't. You have to hold this pencil and listen to the wise words of this old teacher. Your eyes are rolling in your head and your head is tipping forwards and backwards as you try to listen to the teacher and desperately try to keep your eyes open. Every now and then you realise that your eyes have been closed for some time and you've been scrawling total nonsense, weird scribbling on your paper as you thought you were writing words. You're just desperately trying to keep your eyes open. But your eyes sting when they're open, and they feel better when you close them. It would be better if you could just keep your eyes closed, and then you could just fly away into total peaceful sleep. You manage to look at the other children, they're all asleep with their heads on their desks, their eyes firmly closed, breathing deeply. They look so peaceful. But you turn your attention to the teacher again, and despite your desperate desire to put your head on the table to sleep the sleep of an ancient king, you try to listen and take notes. And this is what the teacher says. Hello, children. Today we will be doing a lesson on the grammar of relative clauses in English. Please take notes with your pencils using your school pads. I'm going to tell you all the rules about how to use relative clauses effectively in English. A relative clause is a kind of subordinate clause that contains an element whose interpretation is provided by an antecedent on which the subordinate clause is grammatically dependent, that is, 
there is an anaphoric relation between the relativized element in the relative clause and the antecedent on which it depends. Typically, a relative clause modifies a noun or noun phrase and uses some grammatical device to indicate that one of the arguments within the relative clause has the same referent as that noun or noun phrase. For example, in the sentence, I met a man who wasn't there, the subordinate clause, who wasn't there, is a relative clause, since it modifies the noun man and uses the pronoun who to indicate that the same man is referred to within the subordinate clause in this case, as its subject. In many European languages, relative clauses are introduced by a special class of pronouns called relative pronouns, such as who in the example just given. In other languages, relative clauses may be marked in different ways. They may be introduced by a special class of conjunctions called relativizers. The main verb of the relative clause may appear in a special morphological variant or a relative clause may be indicated by word order alone. In some languages, more than one of these mechanisms may be possible. Let's now turn to the subject of bound and free relative clauses. A bound relative clause, the type most often considered, qualifies an explicit element usually a noun or noun phrase, appearing in the main clause and refers back to that element by means of some explicit or implicit device within the relative clause. The relative clause may also be called the embedded clause. The main or higher level clause in which it is embedded is also called the matrix clause. The noun in the main clause that the relative clause modifies is called the head noun or, particularly when referring back to, by a relative pronoun, the antecedent. For example, in the English sentence, the man whom I saw yesterday went home, the relative clause whom I saw yesterday modifies the head noun man, and the relative pronoun whom refers back to the reference of that noun man. The sentence is equivalent to the following two sentences. I saw a man yesterday. The man went home, man. Note that the shared argument need not fulfill the same role in both clauses. In this example, the same man is referred to by the subject of the matrix clause, but the direct object of the relative clause, man. A free relative clause, on the other hand, does not have an explicit antecedent external to itself. Instead, the relative clause itself takes the place of an argument in the matrix clause. For example, in the English sentence, I like what I see. The clause what I see is a free relative clause because it has no antecedent, but itself serves as the object of the verb like in the main clause. An alternative analysis is that the free relative clause has zero as its antecedent. Let's now turn to restrictive and non-restrictive relative clauses. Bound, re bound relative clauses may or may not be restrictive. A restrictive or defining relative clause modifies the meaning of its head word, whereas non-restrictive or non-defining relative clauses merely provide supplementary information. In speaking, it's natural to make slight pauses around non-restrictive clauses, and in English this is shown in writing by commas. However, many languages do not distinguish the two types of relative clause in this way. Another difference in English is that only restrictive relative clauses may be introduced with that or use the zero relative pronoun. In colloquial speech, a non-restrictive relative clause may have a whole sentence as its antecedent rather than a, a specific noun phrase. For example, the cat was allowed on the bed, which annoyed the dog. Here, the context of the sentence presumably indicates that which refers not to the bed or to the cat, but to the entire proposition expressed in the main clause, namely the circumstance that the cat was allowed on the bed 
presumably to sleep. Such considerations are discouraged in formal usage and in texts written for non-native speakers because of the potential for ambiguity in passing. A construction more accepted in formal usage would be the cat's being allowed on the bed annoyed the dog. Relative clauses may be either finite clauses, as in the examples above, or non-finite clauses. An example of a non-finite relative clause in English is the infinitive clause on whom to rely in the sentence, she is the person on whom to rely, man. Finally, at the end of the teacher's lecture, the teacher says to the class, You may now put down your pencil and put your head on your book and go to sleep. But make sure that your head goes on your book so that the words can go in and stay in there forever in your mind. Because every word you have heard in this episode of Luke's English Podcast, you will remember forever as you sleep, sleep, sleep. And as he is saying this to you, you manage to look up at the teacher, but now he's sitting back in his chair, his head back, fast asleep, and no doubt dreaming of his bed. So now, finally, it's the time for you to get the rest that you desired. You kick off your shoes slowly and curl up on the warm floor next to the radiator. There's even a small mattress and a blanket, so it's perfectly comfortable, even more comfortable than you could ever have expected. And as you feel yourself breathe slowly, and you feel the warmth of your bed you're lying on, you feel yourself drifting back into a deep sleep again, deeper and deeper, more and more relaxed. And as you listen to these words, you know that this is a sleep which will allow you to fully rest, with nothing but slow, deep energy growing inside you as you breathe the oxygen in deeper and deeper and let it out again without thinking, the fresh air nourishing your warm body as you go further and further into a sleep. And when you wake up in the morning, On the other side, you will be so refreshed and so healed by this sleep that your brain will be so bright and ready to speak English with total clarity. And you will remember all of the words and all of the grammar and all of the structures and all of the rhythm and the intonation and pronunciation and vocabulary and expressions will be stored in your mind forever and ever and will always be ready for you to use at any time, wherever you are, whenever you open the window and open your mouth and let the words come out like a cool mountain river on a clear blue day. As the water flows on and on and you sleep steadily deeper and deeper, longer and longer, letting yourself go further and further into this state of wonderful, nourishing and healing sleep. Thank you for listening to another episode of Luke's English Podcast. Good night and goodbye. Bye.
Thank you.